Adding icons and descriptions will help making life easier for your content editors by, first of all, visualizing the content tree and showing how, you can, how to use your properties in your content notes the right way. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add the icons to your document types and how you can add the descriptions to your properties in your document types as well. My name is Jonathan and let's get started. Okay, as you now can see, I'm in the settings section of my Umbrago project. To the left, we can see that I have some document types and they all have the same icon. If we click on one of the document types over here, let's say homepage, in the top here, we can see the name and on it, we can see that we can enter a description. If we go to the left here on the icon, we can also see that we can click on the icon. So let's go ahead and click on the icon. And as you can see in here, we can choose a bunch of different icons and we can change the color. Let's first choose a color, I'll choose green, and let's try and write something like home, as this is the home page document type, it makes sense to use the home icon. Let's uh, click the icon, and let's give this page a description as well. So let's enter a description, call this, this is the home page, page. this is used as the root for our website. Awesome. So now we added a description that tells us how this document type is used. Down below, we can see we have some groups. We have a title box, which is a co composition, meaning that it's inherited from the title box document type. Here, we can't add any descriptions to our document type or to our property. However, down below, we can see we have the content group with the body text inside it. And here we can indeed add a description. So let's go ahead and add a description. Great. So now we added a text which describes this document type and how it can be used. Down below we have another group. This is called front page call to action. This is has again a rich text editor and it's meant to be used for some call to action on our web page. Let's go ahead and add a description here as well. Let's just call, say, add some call to action to our website. Awesome. So far, so good. And lastly, we have the footer down here, which is just a text string. Let's add a, a description that explains how we can, how this is used on our page. Awesome. So far, so good. Let's now go ahead and save it. And then we see the icon changes over here. Awesome. Now, let me quickly go ahead and add a couple of more icons to the rest of the document types and some descriptions as well. And I'll be back in a second. Awesome. I'm now, as you can see to the left over here, I've now added some colors and some icons for our document types. We can also see that for the composition, I've added a small descriptive text telling us what this property is used for. Great. Now let's go to our content section just to have a look and see how it looks for the content editors. So if we go to content here and we expand the tree here, we can now see that all the content nodes that is using the specific document types has the icon on it, as you can see here. Awesome. We can also see over here that now we have the descriptions for the properties that the content editors can add content into. So for the title up here, it has the small description down below. The same for the subtitle. We can see the same for the body text, which explains how this property is used. And it's the same down below for the front page call to action and the footer as well. Awesome. I've now showed you how you can add descriptive icons and give properties on your document types, descriptions, explaining how they can be used, making life easier for your content editors when they're working in the back office. That is all I have for you in this video. Jonathan out.